I genuinely don't understand this, that people hate when I say JS Doc is really, really good, and you should use JS Doc almost, almost exclusively over TypeScript. Uh, there's a couple things that people don't understand, that one, JS Doc runs through the same system as TypeScript, okay? So if you don't understand that, you're already like off the deep end. Uh, I'll start with some downsides. Downside number one is that JS Doc is more cursive to type. Absolutely, Welcome absolutely. Bertifal, appreciate that. Um, absolutely, JS Doc can uh, pollute your code. I, it can't change your code, right? It doesn't change anything about your. It's no. It, it doesn't pollute your code any less or more than TypeScript, in the sense that. Let me put it this way: JS Doc are comments. Let's just say this. Let's just say this for a quick second. You decide you are going to go investigate a library. The library is now in JavaScript because it's been translated. Imagine when you looked at the code that came out of it, it had JS docs on it. You could see every single type as you go through. You could read the code and you could go, yeah. So verbosity, absolutely. I'm on your team. Inverse of verbosity is that you don't have to take out the comments and you can read code given its types. There's something very valuable and makes it really easy, especially when you have to do it. Like for me, I have to do a lot of software exploration, right? I have to go figure out what the hell's happening pretty regularly, right? Uh, pollute my code with documentation, please. Uh, I, well, I, don't, I, I don't use JS doc to put comments on anything. I don't really like comments. Um, uh, it documents your API tool is really easy, yeah. So let me, let me just keep on it's going with this JS doc something here, okay? Because I think this is, this is good to talk about, which is, okay, so you get all the same type, safe, type safety as uh, TypeScript, 100%. It goes through the same system. You could use TSC. The reality is that TypeScript is not safe. It gives you the illusion of safety, and it saves you like 90% of the time, 95% of the time. No matter what, at the end of the day, TypeScript is not a compiler, right? JavaScript is not a compiled typed language. Therefore, anything can sneak through, right? It's just dynamic. It just happens. JS doc gives you the same safety as TypeScript. So that's not, let's not go with that stupid question, okay? Um, second thing that JS doc does really, really well that I really, really like is there is no build step ever. I don't have to go to my coworker and be like, oh, just download bun, right? I don't have to go, I don't wanna build a script that someone else is gonna run. I have to figure out the build process, the release process, all that stuff. And so I can just release the effing library with main pointing to the same J JavaScript file that you run, right? You just like, that's it, that's the thing. That is the one. Oh, you want a binary to it? The binary is still the same file, right? It's just indexed. There's not like this whole thing you have to do. Like it's it's actually pretty nice. It's really really nice. It, it 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 and anyone that does this, like this is a very standard argument you hear from people. Like, oh, why would why would a build step be a problem? You just use Vite and it's that easy. It's just like you know what I just heard. I heard you've never written a large project because once you exceed a certain size, guess what? Building becomes an entire team. Like it becomes this thing that ends up happening where you just have, because all of a sudden you run into all these issues, right? Like TVUI at Netflix is literally millions of lines of code. There is an exceptionally complex build step that involves with it, right? It, it becomes Welcome difficult when you go I forward. You. Like I get base cases, you're not really, you know, you're not really, uh, what's it called? You, yeah, it doesn't really matter. You can just get Vite and it just works. But if you wish to, uh, if you wish to scale that app to a larger size, it gets more and more difficult. No problem for NX Welcome build for two minutes. Yeah, I mean, it, I it gets you. more difficult. Plus, like, if you do a TypeScript check on your builds, like, if you're not using SWC or using, because a lot of people are still stuck on TS Node, because one of the hard parts is that TSC offers a more complete version of TypeScript that something like ES Build or TS uh, or SWC doesn't offer, such as decorators, I believe, are not supported in ES Build, I want to say. And so if you do a decorator, you can't actually get, you can't get the same behavior, so you're kind of stuck a lot of times with, uh, you know, like TypeScript, the JavaScript compiler, and then you get just effed. Um, not to mention sometimes building time at large projects can take hours. Well, not with TypeScript. It takes, I actually have, I actually have waited to get a TypeScript build. Uh, I've had it take over, uh, what was it? A seven, 10 minutes. This happens regularly. If I do a clean build, it takes 10 minutes to build. Don't use decorators. 100% agreed. That doesn't mean it's always the same. It doesn't mean it's always an option. So anyways, I'm just throwing those things out there that you, if you can dramatically reduce incidental complexity, 
Like, there's something to that that's very good. You know, there's something very, very good. You still working on Vim APM? Yeah, multiple days a week. Anyways, just something to think about when it comes to type, when it comes to that. I, I do agree though. The verbosity of types uh, of of JS doc is its true turnoff. Uh, the one last thing about JS doc, um, JS doc does not allow very complex types to be defined. And so, if you want complex types, you can either create a types.ts file and import from TypeScript your types. Or you can do an ambient, an ambient declaration in DTS files and create those. So you can actually drop into TypeScript to di just define your types as complex as you need them to be. And then you can go back into J uh, JS doc. One thing that I like about not having it as a reach first tool is that when I program TypeScript, I tend to make my types more and more complex. Because I can do like super complex operations. And then you actually get this really like highly coupled code that as I change my implementation, I actually have to do a bunch of type work to match the implementation. And that can become really, really difficult. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, I get the reasoning for a library, but for a user-facing code, you most likely uh, want to minify your code. Uh, so you must have some build step anyways. Yeah. Fair, but again, minifying code is much different than uh, once you get into all the different funnesses that you do get into with TypeScript. Like, I know people think it's just nothing, and that's because you've only built smaller projects. Get onto a team that has a million-line code base of TypeScript. Like, the build process just ain't... It's just not as simple as you think it is, okay? It's just not. It will never be. It's difficult, how do you use something with uh, Zod infer? Um, well, Zod infer, Zod infer uh, you do it with a type. A type you, you could literally do a types.ts, right? You can, you, can, you can use a TypeScript file and import it into JS doc, right? Isn't that a, a problem with all type safe languages? Not nearly as much so with Go or with Rust because they have the, they, their tool, the language it, it builds its own tool and all that. And so it's all very self-contained. It's just different. You know what I mean?